Bailey, right? Is it there? Bailey. Okay, here we go. All right, one on
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our Veterans Day program. Uh, please rise and remain standing until after the invocation. Officer of the day, present the colors. Honor guard, Lieutenant Paul. Flag detail, post the colors. Freeze and pull. This time, would everyone join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Honor Guard, yes, Paul, present Paul. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, Paul. At this time, we'll have the invocation by our chaplain. Charlie Erickson. <clears throat> Oops. Almighty God, Father of us all, we, your servants, turn to you for continuance of your blessings upon us. You, who have spared us veterans from the grasp of our enemies, grant us a full understanding of your precious comfort. In your mercy, may we, the living, find our peace. Grant us from above. This day, the challenge of high end endeavor, the beauty of a humble spirit, the strong courage and will, without exertion, to continue to glorify you, to praise you, and to love you to the end of time. Amen. You may be seated. Have a short poem here. It's called I Am a Veteran by Audrey C. Barrett Brett. I served on the battlefront, I served on the base. I bound up the wounded and begged for God's grace. I gave orders to fire, I followed commands. I marched into conflict in far distant lands. In the jungle, in the desert, on mountains and shores, 
in bunkers in tents on dank earthen floors. While I fought on the ground, in the air, on the sea, my family and friends were home praying for me. For the land of the free and the home of the brave, I faced demons in foxholes and caves. I came home and moved on, but forever was changed. The perils of war in my memory remained. I don't really say much, I don't feel I can, but I left home a child and came home a man. There are thousands like me, thousands more are gone, but their legacy lives on as time marches on. White crosses in rows and names carved in queer remind us of what these brave souls had to do. I am proud of a fellowship, a strong, mighty band of each man and each woman who served this great land. And when our glory waves, I stand proud, I stand tall. I help keep her flying over you, over all. I am a veteran.
every year the VFW and the Women's Auxiliary, we uh, have a contest for, it's called the Voice of Democracy, and we choose three winners and they go on to the, the districts and so forth. Um, and we like everyone, especially in the junior class, to participate in writing uh, the Voice of Democracy. And we do award cash prizes to the top three. So at this time, our third place Voice of Democracy winner will give her, her uh, written talk and Mackenzie T. Schaefer. The past directs our future. Whether this is positive or negative depends on the individual and or the neighborhood in which they were raised. We have seen crisis, devastation, and destruction before, but we have overcome them all. Each generation has triumphed over many problems. Our nation has defeated many challenges. Because the past directs our future, we have hope that the best is yet to come. Freedom. What does freedom mean? How often do we really think about what this word means? I asked a friend of mine this question, and she told me this. You can express yourself and be true to yourself, and there is no punishment for doing that. Freedom today is much different than it was many years ago. For instance, blacks and whites couldn't go to the same schools. And if they did, they had separate classrooms, bathrooms, and even drinking fountains. It wasn't until Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech in 1963 that the real change began to take place. Today, a diverse classroom is not seen as a problem to be fixed, but a moment to recognize hard-fought battles. I believe that this is how it should be. We need to reflect on the past to grow in the future. Today we celebrate our differences instead of letting our differences divide us. Our differences do not define us. I also believe that another way equality has changed in the United States over the past 50 years affects women. We have gone from women having no rights such as voting and belonging in the home to women owning companies and running for president. Our hope for the future is that women continue to close the employment and wages gap in order to receive treatment as fair and equal to men's. When my grandparents grew up, homosexuals were shunned and afraid to declare their sexual orientation. Today, people are proud of who they are. Their preferences and their contributions to society do not define who they are. Regardless if you are heterosexual or homosexual, you are still valued as an individual. All people, regardless of their sexual orientation, now have the right to marry in most states. My future is hope because we are not here to judge people. We know that all people have the right to happiness and it is not up to us to decide their happiness because of their sexuality. Another hope is for security. We all seek to be secure in our lives, free from danger, free from fear, and free from anxiety. Our security as Americans is constantly being jeopardized, whether it be from terrorist groups or individual acts of violence. These acts can come from many reasons, one being the lack of mental health care, because of the advances in medicine, a lot of these disorders can be overcome if they are treated. However, this is not always the case. For example, if the Las Vegas shooter had been receiving help, he may not have attacked citizens. Our hope for the future is to understand and treat all mental health issues in order to become a more secure nation. Our safety from violent crime offenders is another hope of mine. Years ago, it was hard to solve violent crimes. After being found guilty, time was served. Once the time was served, he or she was released back into mainstream society with no help or direction on what to do, where to go, or how to get a job. We still have hope for the people that have co committed crimes. We have hope that they will learn from their mistakes. Free rehabilitation needs to happen. We have hope that, th that they will make a difference and have a positive impact on the world. We have hope that we can ha help one another. We believe that people can change. We don't let an ex-con's past mistakes define who they are. Our generation has learned from history. We have become more aware of equality and security for all citizens. We are living in the present with hope for our future. Our parents, teachers, family, and friends have taught us about the obstacles that we have overcome. As the people of America look into the future, we need security and justice. But even with that, we are still not whole unless we are all equal and free. I am optimistic that my generation can change the future for the better because we have knowledge of the past. We are passionate that we can and will make a difference.
At this time, we'll hear from our second place Voice of Democracy winner, Bailey Nelson. Imagine this, you haven't been home for months. All you know is how to do the job that you've been assigned in a foreign place with people you've just met. Now, after eight months, you become accustomed to this place, Afghanistan. Every night, you look up at the stars, thinking about your family at home, wondering if they miss you, what they've been doing without you, but most importantly, when you get to see them again. After being away for such an extended amount of time, you're worried about going back, worried about de being different than you used to be, worried about how much you have missed them throughout the months. You hope things will just go back to the way they used to be when you return. You know they won't, but there's always hope. Then the day comes. Your mission is complete. You can return to your family and leave all of this behind. You are finally going home. 48% of the soldiers coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq have a diagnosed mental illness. This does not include the undiagnosed. Of the 1 million soldiers leaving active duty, 480,000 people return home with a mental issue. Most often they have PTSD, also called post-traumatic stress disorder. Having the symptoms of PTSD can change the way they live their everyday lives. At night, veterans are unable to sleep. During the day, they can easily get upset or depressed. It can change how a family lives together. Also, social perception of veterans can change their behavior. When soldiers returned from Vietnam in the 1970s, they were discriminated against. Businesses wouldn't give them job. They are on their own in the world with nothing to live on. My hope is that there will be better care for veterans in the future. Effective changes are needed. Education is important. It can change the perception people have on history. If the education system teaches the younger generations how brave and honorable it is to be a soldier or veteran, the public's perception will change. Letting them know what an honor it is to be a soldier is not enough. The younger generation needs to be taught that it's okay to have a mental illness. If you know soldiers who need help, help them. Let them know that's completely normal to have difficulties once they return home. One thing different from the non-military world compared to war is that in war, everyone is equal. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, Caucasian, African-American, straight, or gay. What really matters is working together to survive. This equality should exist in this world, but it does not. When veterans come home, they should be treated with the respect they have earned. People should have the comprehension and education to understand these concepts. Everyone is equal. They should be respected and in no way, shape, or form be discriminated against. My hope is that they will be thanked for serving our country and greeted with open arms. It's a very emotional time when soldiers return home. When your family runs up to greet you, all emotions flood the air. Everyone just stands in the driveway hugging, never wanting to let go. Then you walk up to the door together and go inside your beautiful home. It is different. It has been redecorated. The kids have grown too. For the rest of the day, you play with your kids. After watching the sunset together, you bring them to bed. You fall asleep, then go downstairs to catch up with your wife. She tells you how difficult the last year had been with you gone. When she is done filling you in, she asks you how your year was. You can't bring yourself to tell her. You just cannot tell her how it was in Afghanistan. So you bid your goodnights and go to sleep. Well, she did. You lay away that night reminiscing on your time in Afghanistan and how so much has changed in the year that you were gone. You don't give up. You give up and you do your best. You always have hope. With this hope, we look forward to a better country where veterans are respected and treated for all illnesses, not just physical. With this hope, we look forward to a country where all people are treated equally and where everyone is respectful. We can learn from history and improve how we treat each other. In spite of the mistakes we have made in the past, with this hope for the future, veterans will be looked up to simply for who they are.
At this time, we'll hear from our first place Voice of Democracy winner, Tyler Bentz. One year ago, my dad retired from the Air Force National Guard. My family and I attended his retirement ceremony at the base where he had spent the majority of his 24 years of service. During the ceremony, the officer emceeing the program asked if anyone would like to come up and talk about my dad. Service member after service member came up to the front of the room and spoke about what my dad has done for them. They talked about the numerous life lessons and values my dad had passed on. While listening to these remembrances, I realized that I had never noticed or appreciated these values, such as freedom, sacrifice, and determination. These were the same values that have been taught since the beginning of the U.S. military, and yet, in today's world, these values and the moments when they were created are being left behind. From the freedom Americans fought for in the Revolutionary War, through the sacrifices veterans of World War II and all military conflicts made, and more recently, the determination of the soldiers who fight against terrorism. Each of these moments needs to be reflected upon and applied in America's future. One of America's strongest values, freedom, traces all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Early colonists on the eastern shore were forced to obey the strict rule of the British Empire. After tolerating Britain's rule for years, a group of brave patriots declared their independence on July 4, 1776. From that day on, colonists took up arms and fought for their beliefs, and above all, their freedom. The British had their colonists outnumbered three to one, and yet the colonists stepped up and bravely fought these odds. By looking at this event in history, the United States can be inspired to move freely into the future. World War II was a major event in America's past. Along with that, World War II revealed one of America's most important values, sacrifice. Although other military conflicts demonstrated sacrifice, World War II popularized this value. When countries were being conquered by the Axis powers, the United States stepped in. Americans gave up their homes, jobs, parents, friends, their spouses, and children. But above all, many Americans sacrificed their lives. American soldiers gave up everything to defend their country. This kind of commitment to the United States is another value that will help maintain America's identity in the future. Today, our country is under pressure from the constant threat of terrorism. The war on terror has escalated since the early 2000s. This prolonged war has shown one quality that Americans hold, and that is determination. Since the events of 9-11, the number of U.S. military members has been steadily climbing. Americans are volunteering to face the threat of terrorism. Our country's determination is what will eventually crush terrorism and help carry America into the future. Listening to my dad's retirement ceremony instilled in me a new awareness of not only America's best values, but also of our past. I've learned the freedom, sacrifice, and determination Americans have revealed in the monumentous trials that created the United States' history. Our hope for the future won't be found in money, our presidents, or new inventions. America's hope for the future will be found in our past, where we learned to value freedom, where we learned to sacrifice, and where we demonstrated determination. As Americans, I believe it is not only our job to acknowledge these values of the past, but also to enact them in our lives as we move into the future.
If you please rise and remain standing until after the retirement of colors. Their benediction. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you will discuss, dismiss us with your blessing and grant that we may continually experience the calmness and serenity of heart and soul which comes from you. Make us useful servants in all things. Amen. Officer of the day, retire to colors. Honor guard, attach, halt. White detail, retrieve the colors. Resand. This concludes our program. I want to thank the band and the band director for playing a wonderful job, our choir and choir director. Also, a special thank you to our Voice of Democracy winners, Mackenzie T. Schaefer, Bailey Nelson, and Tyler Bentz. And thank you all for attending.